This video provides a brief orientation to the IAB 260 site for 2016. When you first come to the site, uh, you'll be logged out. You can log into the site by clicking on the login link in the top left hand corner of the screen. If you haven't yet registered for the site, you can do that by clicking on register. I'm just going to log in now. Okay, so here I'm logged into the site and I'm on the home page. What I'm going to do now is show you what's on the home page and then I'll work through the top level navigation so you can see where the various um, bits of information about the unit sit. Let's start by looking at what's on the home page. At the top of the screen there's an area for announcements where I can put up any important information. I tend just to put here um, a post when uh, assignments are due so that you see it front and center when you come to the site. At the moment, there's just some instructions there for people who are coming to the site for the first time. Below that, you'll see across the whole semester, I'll have these six links to the important parts of the site. The teaching team blog on the left, the learning materials, the assessment, the unit schedule, the activity wall, and the contact page. Below that is a summary of the latest content across the site. In the left-hand column, you'll see the latest content on your blogs. At the top of the left hand column you'll see the recent posts on your blogs and below that you'll see recent comments on your blogs. In the middle column you'll see the teaching team blog. At the top of that column there's a link to subscribe to the teaching team blog by email. Then there's a list of the recent posts. Then there's a list of recent comments and finally an archive. In the third column you'll see social content from around the site and across the web. At the top of the column is a who's online um, indicator which tells you who in the unit is currently logged in to the site. Below that is a feed for the Twitter hashtag for the unit. I'm not quite sure how that Twitter hashtag is going to go seeing that lots of people in the introductory class on Friday weren't Twitter users so I'll see how we go with that across the semester and I'll remove that widget and put other information there that might be useful. Um, if we're not using Twitter so much. Okay, so now that we have um, had an overview of the home page, let's work across the top level navigation of the site. The first page is the about page, which is where you can find information about the unit and the approaches to teaching and learning in the unit. There's also information under the about page um, about attending online classes in Adobe Connect. So that tells you how to get set up for Adobe Connect. The next tab along is the Meet the Teaching Team page. This is pretty self-explanatory. There's some information about myself, Anna and Kay on this page. The next link is the Teaching Team blog and this is basically like the announcements on a Blackboard site. This is where I post any information that I want to bring to your attention or any requests for input on things. For example, I've just made a post asking you to participate in a poll on um, how you'd like to participate in classes this semester. The next link across is to the class schedule. Now the schedule is in a Google document so if you would like to be able to print it you can click through to the Google document to do that. However having said that just keep in mind that the schedule is subject to change during the semester. At this point I haven't firmed up the details of classes beyond the personas and infographics class next week in week three because I want to see what the results of the poll are like. So the Personas and Infographics class is an important one for your first assignment, the Persona Poster. So this page will be changing as we bed down details for the semester and from time to time I need to change things um, on the fly. For example, if a guest lecturer isn't available or if something happens in social media that we need to um, look at while it's happening, then I might shift topics around. But for the most part, the topics will stay as they are. Next up we have the assessment page and on this page you'll find links to all the information about assessment in this unit. There's a link about the approach to assessment which I'd ask that you read. It talks about why we ask you to get uh, to post your assessment online in this unit. Underneath that you'll find the link for the assignment criteria coming very soon. I'm still finalizing the details of that. 
Then there's a link to the assignment briefs for each of the three assignments in this unit. So you can click through to these pages and see what the requirements are for the assignments. Those are available now for you to look at. So you can see all the background information and a detailed breakdown of how each of the assignments works. Then there's information about late submissions and extensions. I've also made available some information about late submissions and extensions for the learning blog assignment. I'll be going through that in more detail in a video on that assignment. Please read the information about late submissions and extensions. We don't like the policy that we have to give you zero, but unfortunately we do have to enforce it. So please make sure you're aware of um, how that process works. There's also information here about academic integrity, which is really important, particularly in this unit where you're blogging publicly. You need to make sure that you are adequately crediting other people's work. I've also put up some information about referencing and attribution that is specific to this unit and to using blogs for assessment to help you as you are looking for content to use in your posts and to help you with um, adequately citing other people's ideas. There's also some information here on grades in the unit and what to do if you're unhappy with your grade. The Contact Us page includes all the contact details for the teaching team, including my email address, our Twitter accounts, and some information about standard turnaround times. The next page in the navigation is the weekly learning resources page, and this main page will contain a link through to each uh, week's materials. Let's have a look at week two as an example. So here is a rundown of what's happening in week two. Um, I've asked you to have a look at some more information about the site. There's information about the class. We don't have one this week. There's information um, linking you through to the topics that we're looking at this week. So channel U, blogging, critical reflection, and then below that you'll find the link to the learning activity. So let's take a quick look at the critical reflection page as an example. This is pretty indicative of what the content will look like for each of the topics across the semester. I generally write you up some material that includes, um, it, it's kind of a blog post style, I guess, that provides orientation to the content and contextual hyperlinks through to more information or related material. Um, when I link to something in a contextual hyperlink, for example, this link here where I've said that I wrote a blog post about why I don't use public libraries, we are expecting that you will then go and read that material. Um, that is a good example of a reflective writing piece, which is why I've linked to it here. So you need to go and read it to make sure you can understand what I'm talking about in the rest of the post. In the weeks where we have um, quite a few formal readings that I've linked to in the material I've written, I will generally include a section at the top that says um, just the resources or um, just give me the, the readings and you can go straight through from there to access those readings. But when I do write content like this, um, more extensive content, it is important that you actually read that content. So this is one example, but another example for this week is in the Channel U content, I've actually included, um, it's basically a blog post, I guess, um, or, or it's written like a blog post. I've included a, um, a piece of information about how I manage my online identity. And that is one of the learning resources for this week. So you do need to read that as well. The next page in the navigation is the student directory. And that's where you can find um, a list of everyone who is in the unit and you can see their most recent post somewhere um, along, uh, somewhere on the site. So either on their blog, on someone else's blog um, or on the activity wall. You can actually access people's blogs by going to their profile. So I'll click on mine as an example and then clicking on sites that will show you um, what site that person has and you can click through to their site from there. You can also do that by going to the student blogs page directly where there's a link there to um, all of the student blogs. Finally, there is the activity page, which is like a Facebook wall for the unit site. This is where you can make um, kind of status updates or you can ask questions or comment on other people's posts as well. 
Finally, in the right-hand navigation or the right-hand sidebar on the site, you'll see that we've included information there. Um, the sections are basically uh, recent posts from the Teaching Team blog as well as the blog archive uh, for the Teaching Team blog. And that will appear wherever you are on the unit site. Okay, that's it for this brief orientation video. I'll be back with another couple of videos overviewing some particular functionality on the site and those will be available in the playlist directly after this video.